47 pages of 116 pages is where we're staying. As today in the Bible study of the King James Bible, today we're going to look at a few words of languages. Relax, we're not going to learn no new language. But we're going to learn some things today. Latin Vulgate. Now don't get don't get scared. I know Latin Latin Vulgate. It's the Old Testament used throughout church history. So the Old Testament was written in the Latin Vulgate. Now the word Vulgate means common or common people. So what the what the the Vulgate or Vulgar vulgar means it's a language that anybody could understood now when we go to the group to the New Testament we just looked at the Old Testament Latin Vulgate the New Testament is written in the Greek coin a or coin a coin a or coin a Greek. And what that means, Kone or Kone, means common. It's the same meaning as vulgar in Latin. So don't let these words, if you hear them, and you probably won't, unless you're studying the Bible, tree, but you're not going to come across these words with your daily Bible reading. But they just mean vulgar. You've heard that word before. But you never heard used vulgar as in anybody. So have you gotten to the idea yet that God is trying to to bring our word of his word of the English into our laps. And as you seen God work through his word, you also seen Satan, the enemy, come forth with his word. That is a contradiction of God's word. God is bringing our English Bible throughout history that we can hold and live and read and study the King James 1611 Bible. That's what we're looking at. Now the Latin Vulgate 390 to 404 AD the dates of Jerome, he translated from Hebrew. Now the problem is that it had contained the Apocrypha books. Uh, those are the extra canonical books that the Holy Spirit did not want in our Bible. And I know the King James Bible had it in theirs, <clears throat> but they put it in a section that was not the Bible. The Latin Vulgate was from the 4th century all the way through unto the Reformation, at least, as a leading Bible that the people used. Remember, Vulgate, common people. And the problem with the main Bible being Latin, nobody understood it. Latin is a very hard language. It was controlled and kept in continuation the Bible in Latin by the Catholic Church for the very reason the people didn't understand it. And there's one primary or secondary 
means of the Catholic Church is to keep the Bible out of everybody's hands, not just the Catholics. We have read about men who have who are in the family tree of the King James Bible, and they have been burned, they have been killed, they have been murdered by the Catholic Church. And what they tried to do is bring the Bible into the people's hands. They that continued in the Latin and in fact kept the Bible from the common people. So they had to depend upon the church leaders to tell them what the Bible says. This is why we call the Middle Ages the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages was the Bible was closed to the people. You know, we got to understand in church history, by church present, what liberty God has given us that we can open, read, have on a cassette tape, an MP3 player, a CD of the King James Bible. We can get it online. We can buy it online. We can go to the bookstore. We can go to the library. We've got several King James Bibles in the car to hand out to people. Free. During the Dark Ages, there was no Bible for them to read because they could not read it. And that the evil, wicked Catholic Church relied on this to, we will tell you what the Bible said. We will not tell you that Jesus said, call no man your father. We won't tell you that you will find our religion in the book of Judges. So, ignorance of the people unable to read a Bible kept the Catholic Church <clears throat> on the zenith of their control over the people. Now, I, am a Pol I was once a Polish Catholic. My family were Polish Catholics. And... You may ask yourself, well, how can I witness to my Catholic family or my Catholic friend? The number one thing that can be done for a Catholic is to get them in the Bible. Because the Bible itself teaches and reads to us what contradiction the Catholic Church is. To the Bible. If you can get a Catholic to read a Bible with an open heart, searching for God, and you praying to the Holy Spirit to lighten that heart of those eyes reading the Bible, they will find the error of their church. Or in disbelief and in rebellion, they will find an error in God that's not there. So it wasn't a closed Bible in the middle, in the Dark Ages. It was not even an open Bible, because they could open the Bible and they couldn't read. The next word we had, Syriac. Now, Syriac is the Eastern type church. Antioch, where they were first called Christians. Now, this is the this is the family tree of the King James Bible, the Eastern Antioch of Syria Church. Not the Western African Alexandria. 
That's the wrong church. The proper church is the Eastern Antioch of Syria, Constantinople, Turkey. And all those areas of the Caspian Sea area, the Syria. That's what you want. Now the Syriac Hexavecula, if you remember we looked at that before, it's Origins 6 column Bible. He had a Bible with six columns. We are looking at the fifth column. The, L the LXX, the Septuagint. Out of the six columns, the fifth one was the Septuagint. That was the Syriac Hexavecula, Hexavecula, H-E-X-A-P-L-A, which was published in 1660 A.D. Now remember, Origen had, had six columns lined up with each other. Syriac was a proper language in which we call the Eastern Church. So we have a proper language. And when we get a proper language, we can come to the assumption that people are beginning to able to read their Bibles. It's become simple to the common Christian in the Baptist church, I say common because because what I'm going to say, there are some Christians who know what I'm but I'm saying to the common that if I were to hand you a Bible written in Japanese or in Chinese, you would open that Bible for many. And you would see what the people in the Middle Dark Ages saw. And the Catholic Church would be, let me tell you what it says. Now with the Syriac, they hand you an English Bible. And you would open up, you would start recognizing the words. You see, when we come to the tree of the King James Bible, you have got the fruits of God. A tree planted by God is the King James Bible, no other. The NIV, the RSV, the New King James, the, the, the good news from our, that's all a weed. That's all a tear. Planted by Satan. That is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that kills. But when we look at the root of the King James Bible. We also have. A dead tree. Of Satan. Now we have patristic, patristic, which means father. And these are the quotations from the church fathers. Now the church fathers are not Catholic priests. They are church leaders. The substitute that Satan has are the priests that are called fathers. Again, how close you see Satan working. There is the Christ, Jesus. And Satan has the Antichrist. There is a city called New Jerusalem. And Satan has a city called Babylon. There is a city called Jerusalem. 
And Satan has a city called Rome. There are people washed in the blood of Jesus Christ called Christians. And there are pagan idolatry that call themselves Christians. There is the King James Bible. And for Satan, there is the RSV, the NIV, the Good News, the Living Bible, and all the modern Bible. The, 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 the church fathers <clears throat> are quoted numerously from the Bible. <clears throat> and what happened is that these church fathers, they would write letters. And in those letters, they would quote the scriptures. They would quote the apostles. There'd be somebody listening actually to the apostle John or the apostle Paul. And he would go home and say, David, I heard this man preach. And, and, he, and he'd start quoting what Paul wrote or heard. Or said, excuse me. Or... I heard this this man Peter and he would write in his letter what Peter said and God would use those letters and the church fathers had even the copies of the writings they would write down from the copy you know the Bible says the scriptures say James said it is recorded that Jesus said, and they would write these in their letters and their writings. And from their letters and their writings, when we put them all together, we have parts of the Bible being authorized and being summarized as the very word of God. I've written many letters, and I quote a lot of scripture. I, I'm writing commentaries. I'm writing a book on men and women of the Bible. And if, if I were to die, and the Lord would tarry, they would find my writing and say, well, look, this man named Stiley Hayward, of all the Bibles in his time, he used the King James 1611 Bible. And when we checked his writings and we checked the Bible, they're one on one. The, the church fathers, all the writings of church fathers, all the writings of the apostles, all the writings of of Jesus Christ, all that they had, the fragments and the pieces and the parts, when you put them all together, they matched. They fit. And they would not and they will not match with the modern versions of the Bible. The quotation gives us evidence of the Old Testament. Uh, so what it be, would be is they would quote what the Old Testament said also. Because Peter, James, John, Paul, Jesus, all quoted from the Old Testament. So that would back up the Old Testament. By Jesus, Peter, James, and John, and Paul, Quoting from the Old Testament. Oh, that signs and seals and delivers it. Now what the church fathers understood. They agree more with the text behind the King James Bible. More than the text behind the newer translations. So if you would take all the church fathers' writings and notes 
and letters and scribbles. And you would have on my left side the modern version. And you would have on the right side the King James Bible. And you took the father's writings and the, and the scribbles and the notes. And you looked at the modern version. Well, I got something here that they said that's not here. The modern version doesn't say that the Ethiopian eunuch, I believe in Jesus. We got a church fathers here, the Ethiopian eunuch believed Jesus. The King James Bible says he believed Jesus. That the church fathers in the King James Bible came in the understanding together. Not the modern Bibles. Nope. Modern Bibles add and subtract like he did. When they wrote or write in Greek, which many of them did, or in Latin. Amen. When they wrote in Greek or Latin, they quote. Now you know how the Hebrew was translated into the Latin and Greek. By the quotations, by the writings of the church fathers. They helped in the translation of the language. Now, if what they wrote did not agree, you got a big problem. And the church father's writings, the modern version, do not agree. You got a problem. Satan does not agree with God. The King James family tree agree and the church fathers agree with the King James family no problem manuscripts from the fourth century include Coptic Ethiopic Arabic Arabic and Armenian versions again these words you're not going to find these words when you're just studying and reading the Bible but you're going to hear these words if you listen to cassette tapes, CDs, MP3s, YouTube. When you, you go more into more of where your Bible came from. More about your Bible. Codex. Codex. That's not a breakfast cereal. Codex is diverse, different. Codex is not a scroll. Now, we know what a scroll is. You can look up pictures on, on Google and scroll, show me an image. A scroll is a roll. A codex is like our books. I got a book here. This book is almost like a codex. And what differs is the binding. So when you hear the word codex, think about a book. When you hear the word scroll, think of a roll. I don't have a role. Think of a scroll as a role as that your high school diploma, your college diploma. You know, it's rolled up in with a little ribbon. Codex, your book, your Bible. It has actual leads, pages. Codex is usually on millennium or animal skin. Now. 
This book here is written on paper. If I had a codex, it would be leaves together and it wouldn't be paper, it would be animal skin, leather, sheepskin, vegetarians and animals, animal lovers would not like a codex. Tough on them. So there are leaves stacked together like a book, and there are holes in the side. You ever see a, a, a three ring? My brain just went. Okay. Three ring uh, um, binder, right? Is it? Yeah, three ring binder. A whole bunch. You ever see? And you put in that three ring binder, you put in the pages. You put in lined paper that has the holes. And leather thongs would tie it together. So you wouldn't have a metal ring like our three, our three ring binders. You would have leather straps thongs. And the closest thing to that is pictures I've seen of my grandparents going to school. Now, they had a leather thing. It didn't tie the books pages together. It actually tied the books. And they would carry multiple books. But there would be a, a, a pages, leaves of animal skins. They would have holes in them, like a three-ring binder. And the paper you would buy, it's not paper, it's animal skin. And in those holes, wouldn't it be a metal ring, it would be a leather strap, a leather thong. Now you know that the devil would pervert that today, that when I say the word thong, you're going to think about a perverted underwear garment worn by women. Now isn't the devil slick? Codex Synagogicus. That's, the, that's from Mount Sinai, remember? The Catholic Bible. Is on exhibit at the British Museum of London. So, if you wanted to, never mind Synagogicus, that is the devil's work. But if you say, hey, I want to look at a codex. I want to see. You could probably go Google. You could probably go to the British Museum of London. If you want to go there, you can go online, look it up. And you would see. And you can look probably look at look at look up at Codex and you would find images and illustrations that would be found to what a codex is. So hopefully that helps you. I didn't confuse you. So next week, next time, Lord willing, we're going to look at the New Testament. Lord willing.